Hello, and welcome to this episode of Flyby, presented by the National Model Aviation Museum. I'm your host, Claire, and today we're talking about hats. Yes, hats. Why hats? Because, well, look at them. And because one can make a surprising amount of connections between these hats and aero modeling history. These hats are more properly referred to as pith helmets or sun helmets. The design has a history of military use in hot climates and after World War II became commonly used by modelers for sun protection while out flying. The Plymouth International Model Plane Contest, sponsored annually by the Plymouth Motor Corporation from 1947 to 1952, offered a pith helmet with the event's logo as a part of the free products given to all participants for the entire seven years the contest was held. The sun helmets acted as a way to easily differentiate contestants and officials and, of course, keep the sun off. Although not given out to contestants as swag, sun helmets were also a ubiquitous part of the Nationals in the 1950s to the 1970s, with the Navy personnel, judges, and some contestants all wearing standard white ones. For others, white was just too basic. They took a more creative approach to the headwear. Many of the more outstanding hats were worn by officials involving in running the event. Take Art Leneau. Art was the head of Ambroid Company, which sold modeling, cement, and other supplies. An active member of the Model Aeronautics Division of the Hobby Industry Association of America, he also served as liaison between the U.S. Navy and the AMA, helping to organize and run the competition. He, along with several others, was instrumental in the growth of the Nats and the AMA in the 1950s and 60s. As such, he wanted to be seen. And seen he could be in this brightly decorated sun hat. It was originally blue, which you can see on the edges where the glitter is wearing off, but also underneath. Art's sun hat fell and broke at least once, but having easy access to modeling cement, he was able to fix it without being too noticeable until it is flipped over. That was good for art, but it also allows us to see the insides of the helmet. As an American-made pith helmet, the helmet is not actually made from pith, but other pressed fibers. Flipping it over also allows one to see the adjustable head strap that rested on the crown of the head, supposedly allowing for air movement between the wearer's head and the helmet's material. There's also ventilation holes to help. The helmets weren't that cool though, and some of the helmets in the museum's collection still bear the sweat off the modeler's brow, which can also be seen by flipping the helmets over. Art could frequently be seen around the competition wearing his helmet, but he didn't just want to stick out, he wanted others to do so too. He was well known for decorating sun helmets for key personnel involved in the Nats, including Neil Armstrong in the 1964 Nats when he was honorary contest director. Dan Garfinkel volunteered at about a dozen Nats. According to him, he'd rather volunteer than compete, but when he did fly, he really enjoyed flying ornithopters, which is clear when you see his sun helmet with the flapping ornithopter at the back. He had some more fun with his hat too, with his little toy cars and tractors going round and round. We think, but we're not sure, that this wire right here had a toy airplane on it. These were powered by a six volt battery that was taped underneath the brim of the hat and turned on by the switch right here. <laughs> Glitter and fun toys weren't the only way to show off your personality and modeling interests. Larry Gino could be instantly recognized by the hat he wore at every competition he attended between 1951 and 1996. And you could tell what events he had attended by scanning all the pins he attached to the straw structure of his hat. And if you're wondering, yes, it is as heavy as it looks. That's actually the reason he had to stop wearing it. Sun helmets and decorated hats decreased in popularity in the 1960s, although they were not completely gone. At the 1974 Nats, the decorated traditional pith helmet was replicated by a much lighter, smaller version made from styrofoam. To be honest, with that small of a brim, it isn't clear how much sun protection it offered. And sun protection is pretty vital. That's why at most events these days, modelers tend to be sporting one of these. Stylin'. 